Hello, happy Wiki Tree Wednesday, Wiki Tree Challenge Wednesday. How is everyone doing? I know it's, we have people from all over the world watching, so I can't really say specifically good morning, good afternoon, or good evening. <laughs> but I hope everyone is doing well. We have, it's it's gonna it's an it's gonna be exciting live cast. I'm gonna just tell you right now. I, I think it's gonna be pretty exciting. So we'll probably just go ahead and and just start. So we'll go ahead and introduce everybody who's in the stream right now. So my name is Sarah. I'm a WikiTree team member. And then next to me we have Mindy. She's the overall coordinator for the WikiTree Challenge. We have Emma. She is the the captain for Gina's week. She's can't she can't be with us, but we do have a little snippet from her. She recorded something for us, so she will still be with us, just not live. And below me we have Joan, who is the captain for Nathan's week. She is very tired from all the hard work <laughs> of the week. <laughs> and then we have Nathan, who he couldn't make it with us last week because he was sleeping, but he has come on today. This is why we have it at a different time. So welcome, thank everyone. You. And thank you for everybody for being here. And so for those of you who maybe aren't familiar with WikiTree or the challenge, this is your first time watching, Maybe Nathan posted something and you're like, oh, let's go watch or who knows. I'm going to let me tell you a little bit about Wikitree and the challenge. So Wikitree is the community of genealogists who are working together on a single family tree. In other words, we collaborate to go and to grow an accurate global tree that connects us all. And most remarkably, it's free. And the Wikitree challenge is our year long event and part of our year of accuracy where each week we take on a team of, each week a team of wiki treeers takes on a genealogy guest stars tree and collaborates to make it more accurate and complete than it is anywhere else. Our goal is to improve our accuracy on wiki tree, add more family connections and make more friends. So that's, that's, pre that's pretty much how that goes. <laughs> And then also, if anybody, anybody anybody has any questions throughout, please post them in the chat. We'll we'll throw them up when relevant and ask them when we can. Okay, so now I'm going to kick off. Go ahead, Mindy. Can if you're ready? <laughs> I'm going to take it away <laughs> and tell you about those points a little bit. Mm -hmm. Now, there's two ways you can earn points as a participant. And, of course, we don't do it for the points, but that little bit of extra challenge is motivating, highly motivating. Mm -hmm. So in adding a direct brick wall ancestor, we award 10 points per ancestor. Then any nuclear family relatives, so when you add their siblings, their children, you get one point for each of those. And trust me, those add up. And then can we go ahead and go into collaboration? Collaborate. And this is how we do this. Uh, Wikitree is a collaborative site, so this uh, challenge event has been wonderful for us. On the left, you see a spreadsheet. We have a new one each week. People can go in, put their names. They have their names down there. They can put the profile they're working on. That way, when you have 30, 40 people working on one person's branches, they aren't tripping over each other. They know what's being worked on. On the right, you see the top of the G2G post that we do, and that's where people can go in under the great grandparents and say, hey, I broke a brick wall. I found this person. Or sometimes just say, hey, this is what I'm working on, or this is a question that I have. Thirdly is Discord, and we couldn't do it without Discord. <laughs> We have, this is a global site. We have somebody on almost all the time. There are people in there that you can just talk to. You can have them look at a record for you. Uh, if you just need a second set of eyes on a profile or you need an obituary, or you just wanna cheer somebody on, feel free to come in and cheer people on if you're signed up in our, in our Discord room because it really does keep things going also. We use Discord a lot. Mm. I guess we can, uh, do we want to show our, do you want to look at the stats first and then the MVPs or we want to look at our MVP and our top five? Let's go ahead and do our MVPs. That would be our most valuable player. So now Carol Keeling was the top five MVP. Yay, this week. Carol. 
Uh huh. With an incredible 110 bounty points. That was amazing. And then we have Hillary was second. Maddie Hardman was third. Donna Bowman was fourth. And Anonymous Sharky was fifth. And they worked really hard. Let me tell you all of them. So, yeah. Thank you. Awesome. Hillary's in the, Hillary's watching too. I don't know if anybody else is in the chat. But Hillary, yay, number two. <laughs> Okay, let's look at the stats now really quick. I have them, there we go. Let's, let me refresh, because who, who knows what could have happened since I know. <laughs> we, we have people that work right up until the live cast working on these mm -hmm. profiles a lot of times. So now these are the, the score sheets that we go off of, and it's the status of everything we've done during the week. Now the total points, are for each person, like I said, Carol was our top one. She had 208 points, but total points for all the people working on it this week was 1174, which is awesome. Now we had some people that weren't earning points at the bottom. That definitely does not mean they weren't doing anything. Mm -hmm. Those people that I tell you are maybe looking for obituaries or proofreading or, you know, working on the space pages, which they don't get points for anything else like that. Um, they're going to show up on the list but because they're editing but they don't necessarily have points and they're they're happy that way it, it helps the tree now created ancestors for you nathan was 152 and that's direct ancestors to oh, you wow. that's amazing on wiki tree so now i know you had some of these on your own primary tree already and we're counting everything we add in past the great grandparents but trust me you're going to find out how many you get that aren't and then created relatives. Now these would be those nuclear family members I talked about and 412 additional ancestors were added. Amazing work, you guys. They, they just kept bringing them points and it was crazy. <laughs> now bounty points, this is a record breaker for us. Nathan, your mm -hmm. team did 610 bounty points. Wow. That's 61 brick wall ancestors ancestors that were not on your primary tree so yeah um, give them all a hand yeah. is that's, that not amazing uh-huh now we also have profiles edited and these aren't necessarily anything you get points for but um, we have 817 unique profiles edited. And then each time you go in and contribute to a profile, so if you add a date, you add an additional source, the profile's already there, but you go in and you edit it and you improve it. We had 3,896 edits in one week from your team. Crazy. <laughs> and and like Wendy right. said, it doesn't count all of those other things people are doing. <laughs> right. So those are those are points. Great job, everyone. We have a bunch of people watching who are actually participated this week. So great job. They're all, they're all gonna go collapse after this. <laughs> so you no, know, you have to work on Gina's week now. There's no stopping. Rest, rest week is not till a couple weeks. <laughs> okay, so let's continue now. We'll start to get into the juicy juiciness. And Joan, I don't know if Joan and Mindy will probably bounce off of each other about all of everything that we found. Yeah, on the Goodwin line, we added nine direct ancestors for Ida Goodwin. Uh, but we didn't break your brick wall. You didn't? No. no. It's, uh, it, yeah, I'm not surprised. <laughs> they tried and that one was just solid yeah, yeah. i think it'd be dna that will break that one day i hope yeah probably yeah um harry goodwin uh your great-grandfather um was a cement worker in 1901 and then we found him in 1911 and he was a um, milkman now, one of our members have found a lovely picture of him with a milk card, and we're trying to get permission to use that. So we're still waiting for that. Okay. Um, he also served in World War I with the Royal uh, Garrison Artillery and was discharged in uh, 1919 with two medals. And then we also found a, a third great uncle 
uh, George Goodwin, who emigrated uh, to South Africa with his wife and children. And that line was interesting just because everybody else, you know, stayed in England. Yes, they did. Yeah. <laughs> they really did. You were very solidly planted there. Yeah. <laughs> very, very English. <laughs> Okay, we have Caroline Lott, Caroline Cole Lott. <laughs> yeah, this was quite a difficult line. Um, but, um, we actually found five direct ancestors uh, on this line on the mother's side of the family. But we didn't break the call brick wall. <laughs> <laughs> We're just going to break all the bad news to yeah. you first. Yeah, that, was, so. <laughs> that was one of the big walls that I looked at, and uh, it was just so vague what was happening uh, within that we couldn't find anything. Yeah, and he gave different information on different censuses. And, yeah. yeah, he did. <laughs> yeah. Sometimes he was George, and then sometimes he had a different name. Yes, yeah. Yeah. I love that picture of her. I'm, mm. I'm surprised because she died in 1899, so I was quite surprised to um, to have found that. Mm. That mm. really is great. Treasures. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's a bit fierce, though. And then we're ready for the big, busy. Ooh. Yeah, that one. Oh, oh this is a really interesting line. Mm. But, uh... A, a lot of stories. Um, one of our members uh, created a space page uh, with the newspaper reports that she found. I think I think mainly in the Welsh newspapers. Okay. Yeah. Sounds intriguing. Uh, do I have yeah. that space page? Yeah, there we go. Yeah. George Gingell. Job <laughs> and his descendants. Mm hmm. Big me charge. Well, this is exciting. <laughs> yes, there were actually several really interesting lines on that. Now, Job himself was just a poor agriculture laborer, so oh, yeah. he was a farmer. But um, a few, like George that is listed on there, he was a railway brakesman. He was found guilty of bigamy, and he freely admitted when he got caught with a second wife. So. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. And when we looked at Job Grim Grindle, we found an interesting newspaper report that gave details of his earnings and his outgoings uh, that were quite interesting. Um, they were a very poor family. They were agricultural labourer. Then we have... We had Sarah, Sarah Simpkins, and how do you do you say that Gingale or Gingale? Gingel, I think it's something. Gingel is the mm -hmm. way I would say, it, yeah. That one gained new paternal grandparents and the correct grandmother, which makes 10 new ancestors behind her. And there were actually 21 new direct ancestors on wow. George's line there. Um, now, William Simpkins, we found, and Catherine Christian Withers had two sons marry into those lines. So, Job and William Simpkins married into different lines of the family, and that merged. Wow. I don't recognize any of these, uh, these surnames. They're all new to me. You're going to have a lot of new names to look at, a lot. Yeah. 661 yeah. to be oh. precise. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, there are also some uh, instances in that line of attempt at suicide. Uh, there were Fred Grindle, who were um, brother in law of Nathan, um, who attempted at suicide. Uh, they were tied up with the divorce. Um, but, uh, yeah, right after the papers were served. Yeah. Oh, right. So many stories, I can't remember just what happened. 
Very interesting. So you got some, we're getting some interesting stories too. Yeah. And then he had a sister, Mary, that um, committed suicide at the age of 22. So I don't know if that was just a lot of depression going on in the family mm -hmm. at that time, you know, because of sign of the times or if that was a, a physical thing. Um, something mm -hmm. that was being passed down, I don't know. But on the story on that, and you'll get to read that, they found some really um, good information on her. And apparently she was poisoning herself with mercury. Oh, wow. And so mm -hmm. they kind of got the idea she was poisoning herself at one point. And that's a terrible, painful way, to miserable way to die. Mm -hmm. um, they got the idea that she was doing this, but they couldn't prove it. And they couldn't get her to stop. And eventually she did. She was able to end her life. Mm -hmm. So she succeeded. She succeeded and she was only 22 mm -hmm. years old. Mm -hmm. So uh -huh. they don't, um, you know, the newspaper accounts and the, the family lore for that particular family, they say they don't know why her state of mind was what it was. She hadn't gone through a great tragedy or anything. Mm -hmm. She just. Is this the Sarah that's on screen? No, that's the Mary. That was Aino Skinjil's sister. Right. Um, right. Which is not, it's a, a brother of Nathan's great, great, great grandfather. <laughs> <laughs> Got to get all the greats in there. Mm -hmm. mm, that's okay. yeah, the, the savage. Yeah, we had a, uh, nine Great Wall ancestors on this line. Wow. And uh, 17 direct uh, ancestors of Ethel Savage. Yeah, don't recognize any of those names. <laughs> I think I got as far as Francis and Maria. Mm -hmm. yeah. so and then, then we have the the mother, Ro Roseanne Buxton. Buxton? I think that's how he was hit. Yeah. Her line, too. Yeah, and the, the parents were found for Maria Wilkins Savage, which it just kind of took off a little bit after that. Um, her father was a farm laborer. So, you know, not everybody had big stories, and that's fine because you had some really hardworking ancestors, too, that, you know, really hung in there and worked those farms. I did warn you that they were mainly, <laughs> mainly ag labs. We get a lot of farmers. <laughs> yeah, in the south of England. Not very exciting. Well, all family is exciting, I think. Yes, so. <laughs> they are. We have Arthur Edwards. We break some brick walls here, I think. Uh, I think so. Yeah, I think we did three. Three? Yeah, three they were all ancestors. And we also found the marriage of... Um, William Edwards and found his wife's maiden name, but I can't remember what it is now. Is it Garner? Hannah Garner? The one in front? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Joan has her notes. I don't think she's looking at the screen. <laughs> yeah, I'm trying to look at my notes. I can't keep up. <laughs> now, who we have? Yes. William Edwards. Silver Sides. That's a good name. Yeah. We didn't get her parents, but who knows? Maybe some, maybe somebody else will come in and find it. Well, and there are a lot of there are a lot of breadcrumb trails on a lot of these profiles too. You know, we don't. Um, well, some of us keep research logs, anyways. But WikiTree is our research log, so mm -hmm. you may see sections where it says research notes, and it says, "Oh, I think these are the two possible sets of parents," or "Oh, the parents are definitely these people." but they haven't found enough sources to where they felt comfortable creating the profile. So you might, may have even more ancestors out there listed. I was trying to find an example of research notes, but none of these profiles have it at the moment. They married in Covent Garden. That's interesting. Okay. I have to have a look next time I'm in London. Uh, Ellingham. You have a lot of Sarahs. That is a... <laughs> yeah. yeah, there were 10 Brick Wall ancestors on this line and 14 new direct ancestors. Wow, that's a lot. So, 
They yeah. included uh, James Shepherd and Sarah Webster, and we found new parents for Sarah. For Sarah, um, they had um, five children, and he was a gardener by trade. And his wife was only thirty-one when she died, and uh, James died at thirty-six. So they must have left a young family behind them. Yeah, and it didn't say the, the cause of death on the records that we had on the profiles either. So um, there was no correlation with, say, her last born child. It was a, a ways after that. So it must have been something else, but she wasn't that old. Mm -hmm. I found a research. And then, then looking at the Rokes line, that's the line that we're in Santalina. Uh, we didn't find anything new. Um, no. In fact, we used uh, a lot of the information that you've got on ancestry as sources, but we did add profiles for the people that we knew about. Uh, there's not a lot online at all uh, for Centralina. It's, really it's really hard to find. Yeah. Most of the records are held on the island, so I've had to get the archivist to do work for me over there. Sometimes a brick wall just can't be broken, just a brick wall forever, unfortunately. Dengate. Dengate? Yes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Leslie Dengate? Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, we uh, found 11 brick wall ancestors on this line. Mm -hmm. Super. Plus the correction to Alfred Ashdown's mother. Now you had somebody else, but it turned out research showed that her name was Anne Wise. And uh, Anne Wise Holland, she married an Avery first. Then she married Ashdown, Thomas Ashdown, after being widowed. So I didn't see any records that they found that she may have had children with the first marriage, but she definitely did with Thomas. And mm -hmm. they had eight children. And she had actually been running her father's butcher, butchery business with her first husband. And when he died, Thomas stepped in and married her, and the two of them ran the business. Right, okay. Mm -hmm. So that was interesting. It descended through the daughter and not not through a son. Yeah, in these mm. ways too, yeah. Yeah, maybe uh, it happens. And yeah. on those lines, we and actually that, wound up with 41 new direct ancestors. 41. Right. Wow. Mm. On the yeah. Ashton side. Yeah. Yeah, wow, that's mm. brilliant. Mm -hmm. yeah, maybe and that's she... where Silas Thomas came in over the... Manu stole the Mountfield treasure trove. Yes. Um, so we looked at his profile, we've added some information, but uh, this uh, newspaper reports we've not looked at yet. And we're thinking we might still make a space page about that treasure trove, but we've not had time yet. <laughs> There was a lot going on this week. And I did say for people that watched on Saturday, there was talk about a milkman, an excavator, and the treasure hunter. But it turns out none of them are, are related. So they were just all being looked at at the same time, all completely on different lines, it turned out. And then somebody found a nice little newspaper report uh, regarding... Um, a, re a family reunion in 1939 when uh, a group of brothers got together and their combined age were 457 years. <laughs> wow, that's a, that's a lot of years. <laughs> yeah. Smith. I'm sure that was a fun line to work on. <laughs> Smith. <laughs> but you, did you manage? Did you manage to get past him? Oh yeah, yeah. We we found a family that we believe is uh, George Angus Smith's family. We hope it's not the family that you researched and went down the wrong way. But we think we found the right family. <coughs> and I think what gave us a clue were um, that his sister were called Lizzie. Oh, yes, yeah. And uh, I think you were mad that they were looking at that line. 
And uh, we were talking about it on Discord, and then all at once she says, just a minute, I'll be back in five minutes. Liz is giving me a clue. And uh, she think, thinks it's the right family. We all do. Great. It's exciting. Yeah, and the other thing, George Angus Smith, he worked as a lamplighter uh, in 1911, which we thought were quite mm. interesting. Yes, yeah. I'd like to say more about that occupation. Mm -hmm. His father worked as a clerk, and it was interesting that, that around the time that uh, father was born, it wasn't that long after they actually went from a quill pen to a steel manufactured pen. So, you know, really easy to picture, um, put some character into his, mm -hmm. just who he is, as yeah, him yeah. sitting there trying to learn the calligraphy and whatnot. Well, what we call a calligraphy pen now was their pen back then, so. Mm -hmm. But I think, I think that's, that's all of our new exciting, Clients, 61 of them. That's brilliant. <laughs> we did have a cool, uh, the what was it, The this app we wanted to show. Profile overview. Mm -hmm. Which is super cool. And once you get used to working on Wikitree, you can go into anybody's tree and scroll down below it and look at the different apps that we have, little widgets, okay. different things. But this one was fun for you. Yeah, yeah, and if you keep sc scrolling down, on this, it just, yeah, mm -hmm. it just keeps giving you all kinds of handy, and you can have it start with anybody. You can start with your great grandfather if you want, but it just gives you all kinds of handy links. So you can hover over or click on where it says biography, and it'll show you. Uh, the biography area and a snapshot. Mm -hmm. In other words, did somebody write actually put narrative in there or is it just a he was born in 1732? Uh, there's links to the BioCheck app. There's links um, sources. to the sources. It tells you right on there, you'll see a little icon that will tell you like 10 sources, another profile, three sources. If there were no sources, there's a little red button and it says zero sources. So, you know, that's how we know we need to go to that one. And yeah, I saw one of those go by and it needs to have some sources added to it. Just a really fun way to look at your ancestors though. It shows you the ones that have images, um, shows you ones that link off to other sites. Categories. And if you click on them, it shows like connections. Like I see lines behind. Yeah. So, yeah, super right. cool app. We have a lot yeah. of great app developers on Wikitree that are always making neat things to just make it all better. So, that's a lot of fun. That. Yeah. That's really good. And then we have our final chart. Final brick wall chart. So Nathan, when we started now, every one of those spaces that you see the yellow in it, that is yeah. where you needed an ancestor. So yeah. those were your, your brick wall spaces that our teams wanted to, to focus on. And then where you see all that looks like a whole bunch of little dots, the little bees, every, one, mm -hmm. every single one of those is a brick wall broken down. And you'll get a copy of the actual chart as well as the list. So you know, you know which relative it goes to. Right. But um, that's what we work off of, you know, I, well, I do, I assess points using that during the week. And you had a lot of ancestors missing, but they were spread out, which was kind of fun, you know, so they weren't all in the same generation. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you had obviously a lot of research done on your tree too, but we had a lot of fun places we could play in the branches. Mm. And then Sarah, can we look at the... Percentages? Percentages. Now, this is the fun one because we had such a record-breaking week. Um, we couldn't resist, Nathan. And you were doing good once again on those earlier generations. And mm -hmm. what the percentages you'll see, we have you when you started with us and then what you were when you ended. So um, the further out you go, the bigger change that we made. And the biggest changes were generation seven, eight, and nine. Mm -hmm. Now for Gen 7, you went from 59% to 78% ancestors now. Wow. Gen 8, you went from 17% to 47%. You're almost halfway through that. And then I don't know on, how much 
Sorry, go ahead, Mindy. And I was going to try to do is, math, but it wasn't going to work. <laughs> yeah. Gen 9, you went from 3% to 13%. Now, of course, if we'd had more than a week, that number would have been bigger, but people were trying to spread out and do those brick walls. Yeah. And there are spots where there's those direct ancestors added behind them, but not everywhere. But that gives you a really good jump start. Yeah, it's amazing. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. Brilliant. Yeah, the percentage definitely. Mm -hmm. Well, so that that's all. I don't know. Does anybody have any questions? Or Nathan, do you have any questions, comments, concerns, inquiries? No, just to say thank you very much to, uh, to everybody for all your hard work and your efforts. And I look forward to yeah, having a look around and um, meeting my new relatives. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Oh, how you might not actually go to sleep when we finish. Who knows? Maybe oh, you'll, yes. just, you'll stay up with all the excitement. Yeah. <laughs> So I take it we met your expectations and exceeded them at least a little bit, Nathan. Definitely, yeah. Thank you very much. Thank you. Our pleasure. Everyone did awesome. Good job. So, okay. Well, if nobody has any questions for Nathan or for us about anything that we talked about, we might just move on to our next Yes. All right, Joan, do you have any last remarks um, before we switch off? Uh, no, not really, except <laughs> a big thank you to the team because they did a fantastic job this week. Um, mm -hmm. It's been really good. Mm -hmm. It's been super, well, super great. What, it was 60, 61? That's a record ranking. Mm -hmm. Record ranking. Record ranking. Brick we ball. got you. That's a big time record twister. breaking. I'm going to try it. <laughs> <laughs> Just say, that's big. We rock. <laughs> <laughs> we rock. All right. Okay. So next we have, and thank you again, Nathan. Thank you for letting us work on your tree. You're very and welcome. Thank you nice for, for coming on. I know it's a little bit late for you, but it's awesome. <laughs> thank you very much. So we have next, we have Gina Philibert Ortega. She could not be with us today but i'm gonna quickly introduce her and then we have a little video that she made she recorded it for us and she knew she couldn't be here so she kind of answered you know the questions we usually ask and all of that so first of all i'll introduce her really quick i guess there's usually a picture there i don't know what happened <laughs> so gina she's an author researcher instructor who focuses on genealogy social and women's history she has a master's degree in psychology and women's studies and a master's in religion. She's published three books, numerous articles published in magazines and online. And she's the editor of the Utah Genealogical Association's magazine, Crossroads. And her writings can also be found on the Genealogy Bank blog. Her current research includes women's rep rep reparation and citizenship in the 20th century, Foodways and Community in Fundraising, Cookbooks, and Women's Material Culture. And now, this is exciting that we have video. <laughs> I know. Before we do the video, Sarah, do you think we could have um, Emma tell us a few of the locations that yes. she'll be working on with her team this week? Yes, 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 of course. Uh, so we have a little bit for everybody this week. We have a large um, line of French Canadian. We have quite a bit in the United States. We have England, Germany, I believe Sweden and Denmark. There may be some others, but that's just the first, you know, few generations out. Okay. Very cool. So it's going to be a. Uh, we have our usual experts in some of those fields so oh, that's gonna be, be a good week okay so let's go play the video let's see let me know if you can hear it i can't hear it sarah okay can't hear it hold on a moment let me Try. I should have should have tried to do this before. Sorry for technical difficulties, everybody. Now 
now. It's so loud on my computer. Why? Okay, hold on. I'm going to attempt a quick changeover. Okay, bear with me one moment. <laughs> we will be back shortly. Usually, I'm. It's usually, it's so smooth, and I there's no problems. Okay. Yeah, we don't usually have to run video though. Yeah, I know. Okay, so let's try again. No. Okay. So I'm gonna do one last thing. I'm actually gonna open the video <laughs> instead of, um, okay. Instead of screen sharing? Yes. Well, the still screen sharing, but actually open the video in the file itself. And we'll see how it goes. Chris but, says you can't do it on a screen share. Like you can't, what happened? Hmm. Let me, I feel like I've done a video. I did a video before though. So let, let me try one more thing. And then if it still doesn't work, <laughs> I, I don't know. <laughs> okay. So let's try this again. I apologize everyone. It says you need to play it from the link and not the file. Oh, you guys let me go a minute telling me that it wasn't. <laughs> uh, sorry, I was trying to work with somebody to find out what to do about it because. Uh, um, I thought it was yeah. working. I was like, yes. <laughs> okay. So, and I'm so, okay. I could try right, to guys, download. With us. Okay, I could. I'm going to download it really quick and StreamYard lets me actually play a video file instead. Because <laughs> I, I, I put it on my screen so I couldn't see anything. <laughs> I just so, I, it's very weird how it doesn't work because it's so loud on my computer. So. Ben thinks the noise, noise cancellation, cancellation is causing it. Yeah. Let's try that. Echo, there's echo cancel. Volume. Okay. It's taking forever to download. This is, this is I am, I am sad. <laughs> okay. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and put it again over here. It's still downloading, so bear, bear with me. Oh, it's almost done. Almost done. Okay. Let's hope this works. Hi, everyone. I am Jane yes. Ortega, and I'm sorry that I couldn't be with you today. 
Unfortunately, I have other uh, things I have to do at the same time, but I will see you next week. Now, before I answer Wikitree's questions for me, I want to say thank you to Wikitree for inviting me to be a part of this. I'm honored and uh, grateful that you're willing to do some research for me on my behalf. Uh, thank you to the volunteers. My understanding is there's about 40 of you who are willing to delve into my family tree, and that's very cool. I'm very excited to see what happens and what you uncover. So let me answer your questions. And I know the first question is, who is my favorite ancestor? You know, this question sometimes makes me a little uncomfortable because it's kind of like when your kids ask you, which is your favorite? Uh, you, you don't really have a favorite. And uh, I, I never know how to answer this. I will tell you that Obviously, there's some ans uh, some ancestors that are easier to research than others, and so they're a little bit more enjoyable to research. I, I probably do have some favorites. I don't know that I have a favorite, though. Uh, one of my favorites, just because my grandma used to tell me about her, is my ancestor, Mary Ann Smith McNeil. She was married to a polygamist. My, she is my maternal grandmother's grandmother, and she knew her. And so I always enjoy learning more about her. And I'm fortunate in that other descendants have written about her. So uh, there's a lot for me to read about her. And, and so she's probably one of my favorites, but I don't know that I have an overall favorite. But maybe you'll uncover someone and they'll be my new favorite, right? So the second question I have that I was asked to answer is, I've got to look it up here. Any interesting stories to share that you found out about your family? You know, uh, this probably isn't going to be real exciting or, uh, I don't know, maybe not interesting to anybody else, but... What I love about genealogy is obviously we love it and we love the research and the hunt and the puzzle, but I like it when we can pass that on and uh, add that um, excitement and encourage younger people in the family. And probably a few years ago, I worked with my nephew to do his Boy Scout merit badge on genealogy. And I asked him, who do you want to research? We had done it for his Cub Scout merit badge, so we had already done some of that. For that, um, or it wasn't a merit badge, it's a loop, a belt loop. For that one, he had interviewed my dad, his grandpa, and uh, learned about his Vietnam War service. And so I asked him, who do you want to learn about? And he told me he wanted to learn about my great-grandfather, which was my dad's grandfather, Oscar Philibert. And... About that time is when his um, World War II draft card was available. So I pulled that up. We had already looked at his World War I draft card. And so, you know, we knew what it said. But, you know, in between that time, he had served in the Navy. He filled out the World War I draft card. He joined uh, the Navy right towards the end of World War I. And he got married to my great grandmother. He met her here in California and, um, you know, had a son. So in the World War II draft card, he's older. And on, on there, it talks about having a tattoo. And that tattoo is of a, um, a Cupid doll on his chest. So when I bring this up, my nephew starts laughing and he's like, what's, what's a Cupid doll? And you know, that really reminded me because I'm such a huge fan of social history and adding context to your genealogy and not just looking at name states and places, how important that context is. So I explained what a Cupid doll was to him. I showed him some examples. At that time, my dad was still alive. So I asked him, do you remember this tattoo on your grandpa's chest? And he said, that's what that tattoo was. Uh, you know, by the time he had seen it, probably in the 1950s, early 60s, it had um, 
not looked as crisp and sharp as it had when he had it uh, done. And so we talked about that. My dad gave his experience of, of seeing it. We, you know, we did some research on Cupid doll tattoos, and actually they were very popular during this time period of, you know, between World War One, the 1920s, that kind of thing. And so, you know, every time I see my nephew, he says, remember that Cupid doll tattoo? And I just, I love that because, you know, names and dates, that's boring. But here's this Cupid doll tattoo that has, you know, made genealogy seem a little bit more alive to him. And so that's probably one of my favorite stories. You didn't know tattoos could be so interesting. And I'll tell you just, you're probably not so interested in this. But so for that research, we not only looked at his military records, but we also looked at the history of tattoos, uh, especially for Navy guys. And World War I Navy guys, I looked at the history of Cupid dolls. I looked at the history of Cupid doll tattoos. I looked at Flash, Tattoo Flash for Cupid dolls so we could kind of imagine what it must have looked like based on what my dad remembered and also what seemed logical. So really the only thing we didn't do is try to narrow down where in Southern California or San Pedro he got it. But um, it was fascinating research. So... Now, the next question I was asked to answer is, when did I first discover Wikitree? You know, I've known about Wikitree from the beginning because I knew people who were volunteers and who worked with Wikitree. I've met Chris many times at conferences. And so I've always known about Wikitree. Now, I have to admit to you that I've never had a tree on Wikitree. So I've used it and I've looked at it and that kind of thing. And I've written about it in uh, articles and courses, but I've never used it before. So this was my opportunity to try it out. And so I'm grateful for you guys for helping me. And I will admit I've had to ask questions because uh, I wasn't sure how to work it. So I, I, I also want to say before I go on to the next question, you know, you guys are the ones that are so important in genealogy, volunteers. Genealogy has for a long time been a volunteer pursuit. And the reason we have certain knowledge, indexing, uh, digitization, you know, genealogy websites, wiki tree, is because of the power of volunteers and their wanting to give back and to help others. And so it's because of people like you that the genealogy world is so strong. So thank you. All right, so the next question is, what's my current brick walls? You know, some of my brick walls have to do with um, obviously not being able to go anywhere and not being able to research on site. Some of it has to do with uh, materials that are archival in nature, not being able to get there, but, but also maybe not even existing. Probably one of the long-term brick walls we have, it's on my dad's side, it's his Chatham line. So um, his grandma, Oscar Philibert's wife, was Mary Chatham. And I know quite a bit about her. I knew her. Uh, and I know a little bit about probably her grandfather, her great grandmother. So they go back, they go from California to Texas to North Carolina. And so one of our brick walls has to do with the North Carolina Chathams and uh, kind of the Martin Chatham, who is, oh gosh, he's, he's alive around the mid, early to mid 1800s. He has sons who go to the Civil War. In fact, one of my ancestors, he is in the, uh, he goes to Texas and then he's in the Civil War. And that branch is the one who comes to California. But Martin Chatham, uh, we never have been able to kind of get past him. There's some people in town who have uh, a similar last name. And there's been some people who've thought that maybe they're related somehow, but we've never really been able to tie him back to, uh, you know, any kind of uh, 
parents basically so now i will admit to you that i don't know if some people have used some dna to do that but that's been one of the brick walls for a long time i think for me also on that line his son who is my ancestor moses henry chatham you know he leaves north carolina for some reason he goes to texas and uh, boards with a family, marries their daughter, goes off to the Civil War. And he is later murdered once he gets home. And so some of that story, I've gone to Texas, I've done research in the courthouses and everything else. Some of that story is a brick wall because uh, there's just no extant records. For example, his burial, there's no extant uh, burial marker. Uh, we're not even really sure. We We pretty much have decided he was buried on their land but you know there's no proof of that so there's stuff like that the nice thing about that family is there have been questions even after we went to texas and did research and over time new things have become available so that's probably one of those i need to go back and see if there's anything more available or not but that's one of the ones that i have all right our next question, or our last question, is what do you hope to see in participating in the WikiTree Challenge? So I thought about this a lot. And when I was initially approached, I thought, I, I don't know. You know, I was kind of hesitant. And then as I started putting my tree up on WikiTree, I realized a few things about me. And this is probably something you've noticed with other guests, or maybe it's just me. But uh, people who work in the field of genealogy often don't get a chance to do their own genealogy. And so I realized that there's been lines that I've done quite a bit on, and then lines I really haven't, for whatever reason. And... Uh, stuff that I thought I knew and then realized I had no idea. So I think for me, what I'm hoping is uh, one of my lines, which is off my dad's side. So it's Philibert. And then it's off my grandmother's side, uh, the Montgomery side. There's a lot there that actually I don't know. Uh, the only thing I know is from a family history book and it's not source cited. And I think what happened was years ago, I just entered the information into my genealogy software program and thought, well, I'll get back to this someday. And I never did. So, uh, you know, there's there's these families there in, in fact, some of them I didn't even, I didn't even remember where they were from. You know, they're back in Ohio, they're in Pennsylvania, in Virginia, they're surnames like the Montgomery's and the... Harsh Bargers and the Riddles and the Ranks that I really, I I don't know anything. It's it's unsourced. It's from a family tree book, and um, in some cases there's some stuff in that family tree book, but but not a lot. And so I think as I was going through this and adding some information and and you know, I I was I was mad at myself for not having explored this but also i realized just how little i knew and uh so obviously i would love to hear more about that and learn about what you find on that you know if you find some great stories about female ancestors obviously that's one of my interests so that would be cool so I, i'm I'm just ready to hear what you find. And, you know, the nice thing about a collaborative effort is some people get interested or have expertise in something that I don't. I don't have expertise in German research, even though I have German ancestors. So I'm I'm just excited to see what you uncover and, and what you can find. I think that's going to be exciting, and I look forward to building upon that. So, So once again, thank you for inviting me. It's great to be with you virtually, but I will see you next week and hear what you have to say. Take care. Okay, it was muted. <laughs> but after some technical difficulties, that worked. You know, learning curve, learn something new. <laughs> but that was Gina. We're very appreciative if you end up watching this later, Gina. Thank you so much for doing that for us. Uh, and we had a bunch of people chatting. Benjamin asked, 
Christina question, pretending she was here. If we can use her photos, did we ever, did we ask her that beforehand or not, Cindy, Emma? As far as I know, we can. I'll okay. verify it though, and Emma will let everybody know. Okay, so we'll, we'll ask it's, that. It sounds like um, one thing she's asking for is for us to expand on the resources she already has on some of the already identified family. So that would be a really good goal to meet this week. Yeah, it should should be it should be a good week. Did we have any other questions that maybe or anything for Gina or we want to ask Gina or I don't know. <laughs> if not, we might head off for the evening. Yes. No. I'm gonna take that as a no. No more questions. <laughs> I think they've abandoned us to go work on the tree. <laughs> Probably. Yeah. So with this week, since we, because we usually have our live stream at eight, but because we were accommodating time zones, we started at five. So it did start at five instead of eight. So you can go start working on it. Get those brick walls. Let's see if we can do better than Nathan's week. Can we break more brick walls? Can we That'd do it? That'd be pretty hard. <laughs> <laughs> Who knows? When we put wiki, when we put our wiki triggers to the test, they always succeed. I'm constantly amazed at how much we do. It, it blows my mind. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's all of you always. So we'll do. So yes, we'll we'll close up unless there's anything last minute we want to say, ask, do, but. Thank you everyone for watching. Thank you, Nathan, again. Thank you, Gina, if you end up watching. Um, thank you, Joan. Thank you, Emma. Such We really appreciate you, appreciate you guys being captains. And thank you, Mindy. Nothing, none of this would be possible without you. And so next Wednesday, next Wednesday we'll be at the regular time, 8 p.m. Eastern Daylight Savings Time. And we'll have Gina on and do we have, she's by herself next week because it's a rest week after, correct? Yes, she is. Okay, so it's just going to be her wrap up. Um, and then we have a rest week so you can take a breather. So one more week to go. And Saturday at 10 a.m. Eastern time, we have our usually usual Saturday weekly recaps where we talk about everything Wiki Tree. And yeah, that's, that's about it. And then don't forget people to come back after the rest week for Yvette mm. Hoytink because she is going to be the most challenging uh, set of branches we've had so far. Yes, that, that's going to be a very fun week because we most, she's going to be, because we've had England, the United States, and Canada. So she's going to be our, you know, different, it's going to be, it's going to be a different week for sure. So I'm excited. We're getting all these new guest stars on. So yeah, and that that's all folks. <laughs> We will see you next time. Keep an eye out. We will be posting the highlights um, on Wikitree. Share them around. And we will see you Saturday. That's the next, next time I'll see you guys. So goodbye, all. <laughs>